Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I will play a song. I'm going to uh, share on is from Luke chapter 4, verse 38 and 44. And of course, uh, this morning when I received the, the message from pastor, you know, about a brother situation, of course, with a heavy heart, you know, even I try to share now, you know, Jesus heals many. But what about those, you know, who are, you know, uh, in a very difficult situations? And I believe this is not for us to question God's power or God's will. And we believe that truly Jesus, he has healed and he will continue to heal many and in his own way and timing. Uh, those of us who grew up earlier, when we read about, you know, the Reader's Digest, I always like to sing Xiang, I like to read Reader's Digest. I don't like the story. I only like this portion, which is laughter is the best medicine. And uh, I'll let you uh, look at the cartoon, whether you can get the message or not. You know, uh, this is Jesus talking to the leopard. He said, lepers, I hear lepers. So truly, um, sometimes, you know, a bit of laughter will be good for our health, but is that the only thing that can help us? Today reading is, I'm going to uh, share from Luke chapter four, verse 38 to 44. And this incidence is, also recorded in the uh, Mark chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 8 because these three are the synoptic uh, Bible. Jesus healed many people 
after leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her. Everyone back. Standing at the bedside, he rebuked the fever, and it left her as she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down, Evening, people throughout the village brought six family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out of his command, shouting, You are the son of God, but because he knew he was Messiah, and he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. Okay. Page 44. Jesus continued to preach. Early in the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The crowds searched everywhere for him and when they finally found him and begged him not to leave them but he replied i must preach the good news of the kingdom of god to other towns too because that is why i was sent so he continued to travel around preaching in the synagogue throughout judea amen Hey, thank you, Auntie Mary. Okay, thank you for the reading. Uh, as, as I said earlier, you can find these incidents in Matthew chapter 8 also. So what can we learn just from these few verses? Okay, I pick out a few points to share here today. Number one, okay, we can observe or we can read, okay, we can bring our troubles to Jesus freely. What do I mean by that? Because if you read the earlier part, that when Jesus came out from the synagogue, remember he just performed a miracle in the synagogues and he just proclaimed, okay, from Isaiah. Jesus, he probably he was swarmed by people and some people were threatening him. But when he came out, immediately he went to Simon's, Peter's mother-in-law's house to heal her. So what it is telling us is anytime freely we can present, we can come to God, we can bring our troubles to God, to Jesus, and he is never too busy. Whether it is a private place, as what we read, which is private homes, or in a very crowded place. Why do we say it's a crowded place? Because remember, it is at sunset, that is during the Sabbath, okay? Because people, they know that it is still during Sabbath. So probably everybody rushed to Jesus. So he swam with people, but in the crowded place, Jesus still managed to heal many. As what well, we... You know, listen from the song, Jeremiah 17, 14. At any time, we can pray, we can approach God and say, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. To me, this is very significant when I pick out this point that, you know, we don't need to go through a medium. We don't need to go through a person's. We don't need to go through a process of a ritual that anytime we can bring our trouble to Jesus freely. I believe freely is the most important word here. There are no rules or regulations. Present, bring, approach, and bring our trouble to Jesus. That's the first key point I want to share here. The second one, it is Jesus' willingness to restore. Okay, it is not in today's reading, 
okay? It is recorded, actually, it is, this incident happened after, okay, uh, Jesus has healed many, this, he healed the lepers. And I want to uh, pick up from uh, Book of Mark, also mentioned in Book of Matthew, a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, okay, you can make me clean. And the word Jesus was indignant, in the sense he is compassionate and he reached out his hand and touched the man i am willing he said and be clean now i am willing okay i put in a red a color there so a little bit of background i think pastor has shared many many times okay in the past in the society in their culture okay leprosy was viewed as what they call fingers of god meaning that only God can remove it. Only the finger of God can remove it. And the lepers on that day, sorry, leper, not lepers, he infringed on the social taboo, meaning that he appeared publicly. In desperation, he approached Jesus. And it is his public declarations in Jesus. He's confident in Jesus that only Jesus has the power to remove it, i.e. the finger of God. So when Jesus says he is willing, okay, and how did he demonstrate that? He touched the man. I put in the word, he significantly touched the man. In a way, it is showing to the world that at any time, God is willing to heal and restore. And what he's telling us is also that we need to have the same attitude as the leper. That we need to discard all cultural or social taboo. And we need to have the confidence in Jesus that he is the one that has the power, he is the one that has the finger of God to heal and to restore. Most importantly, Jesus is willing all the time to restore. That is the second point I want to share. And uh, for this year, our DG, we uh, have chosen this book to supplement our DG study. Uh, is called Seeing the Heart of Christ by Bill Crowder from Discovery House. And uh, when we study about the woman at the well, okay, uh, this chapter is also, this incident is also mentioned in this book. And on Tuesday, we read about, you know, how Jesus, you know, intentionally approached the woman, okay? But what the author Bill Crowder reminded us that Think is reminding us, think easily how, sorry, think how easily Jesus could have ignored that Samaritan woman. Why? Because her pain was a problem, nothing to do with Jesus. She's racially inferior. Okay, I think in our context, this is very, very, in a sense, um, obvious. She's not one of the beautiful person, and her life was a mess. And when she responded to Jesus, I don't think she replied in a friendly way, it with sarcasm. Okay, so Bill Crowder was asking these questions. Think how easily Jesus could have ignored her, but he did not ignore the woman. He did it with compassion, not just with compassion. He answered her with piercing questions. He reached out to her. He touched her. Her. It is reminding me again that sometimes, yes, we want to heal people, we want to restore life for people. Okay. But are we following Jesus' approach? Not just showing pityness or sympathy. We reach out and we touch the person, not just physically, we touch them so that we are able to show them the love of God. When we talk about healing and restoration, 
Jesus has shown us the best examples. Thirdly is he has authority and power. Through these two miracles, okay, we can see that Jesus has authority over life and power. Over life and power over spiritual forces. Our sickness, our illness, our troubles, okay, what we are facing today in the world is a consequence of living in a fallen world. Just through two, in a sense, miracles. Okay, Jesus has shown us he has full authority and power. In Luke chapter 39, okay, he bent over and rebuked the people. Yeah, and in the next, okay, the people were amazed and they were saying, what kind of new teaching is this? And he is so full of power and authority. And he can even give order to the spirit and they obey him in Mark chapter 1 verse 27. And also in Matthew chapter 8, he drove out the spirit with a word. Okay, if not with many words, he just with one word and one command, he healed the sick. And what is Jesus' authority and power? It's just through a single touch and a simple word. And consequently, Jesus delivered complete cure. Why do I say complete cure? If you read what happened to Simon Peter's mother-in-law, she got up and once, at once and began to wait. Another version said, began to cook a meal for Jesus. So when Jesus healed or restored, it's a complete cure. Okay. Now, of course, we can say that it maybe it takes some time, maybe some months or years, but I think ultimately what we need to acknowledge is because he has power over spiritual forces, he has authority over life. Time is in his hand. Ultimately, Jesus is the one that will give us complete cure. I just extract two Bible verses that, as I say, he used simple word. And the Bible reminded us God's word is a medicine. Okay, not laughter is the best medicine. God's word still, still, okay, is the best medicine. And it is mentioned in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, 22. And it's also in Psalms 107, verse 19 to 21. Okay, say that he sent out his word and healed them. I hope this can encourage all of us that God's word is truly the best medicine. And last but not least, this verse is reminding us God's business comes first, no matter what circumstances. And we can notice in verse 42 that he went to a place. Okay, why? Because Jesus was at constant communion with God the Father. Probably he's tired. Probably he needs to be recharged. But I believe he wants to be praying, talking to God, not just asking God for direction. I believe when he is in constant communion with God the Father, he is also praying for those who are sick. He is also praying for his disciples. He's just praying, okay, to get God's will, right? It's a reminding to us that we need to have daily communion with God. Even though there are miracles, deliverance, they are very impressive, but these are not his emphasis. Because what he wanted to emphasize is, as mentioned in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, I listed down here, to tell the people then that God was with him. In the mix of doing all the miracles, God was with him. And when Jesus answered his disciples, he's very clear about his mission. It is to preach the kingdom of God. And he said in Mark chapter 138, that is why I have come. So he didn't allow popularity to distract him when the disciple told him 
hey, look, everybody is looking for you because he's now popular, but he didn't allow this to distract him. Okay, I believe in today is also very, very significant, this message. Sometimes when a person's or a church or pastor's ministry has flourished, the popularity sometimes can distract, okay, why they are doing the ministry. And again, in John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus said, we must work the works of him who sent him while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus stays very focused so that God's kingdom can be preached. Again, it is reminding us again. Why do I say that? Because everybody now is saying MCO, not 2.0, could be 3.0. Okay, because we do not know whether this will be 3.0 or 4.0. It doesn't matter anymore. But what matters to us as followers of Jesus? We need to know that Jesus is still at work. Bring our troubles to him freely. As a church, as a body of Christ, we are in a fallen world, but yet we need to follow Jesus' footsteps to be compassionate. Bring the troubles freely to him, those who are physically unwell. We know those are in our mix. Who are emotionally, I call it, strained and stretched, drained out. Those who are oppressed okay, by the spiritual forces and those who are affected by the pandemic. We bring those troubles to him freely. And we speak forth his word because we know that he is full of power and authority. Speak forth his word and proclaim healing from all kinds of brokenness. Not just physical brokenness. There are a lot of brokenness in our country, in our relationship with man. And we proclaim God's word in restorations of family, our community, our economy, our nation. And last but not least, I believe all of us, it is not a request, it is a command. I believe pastor will preach on this on Sunday. God's kingdom continue to expand and that should be our primary focus. We are not going to be distracted by popularity. Yes, even though we are helping a lot of the poor in this pandemic, we are not distracted by the crowd with all the people, all the requests coming in because as what Jesus said in Mark chapter 2, it is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. There are many, many out there in MCO 2.0 who are, I'll say, quoted and unquoted sick. And we need to be there to bring healing and restoration to them. Okay, so that's the end of my sharing. And I hope uh, this can encourage all of us to continue to plow on, to continue to work for the kingdom's sake in the mix of a pandemic. And we can learn together with Jesus, knowing that he has healed and he will continue to heal those who seek him because he is willing to do it all the time.